Hey guys, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're listening to the podcast, welcome back to Brutal Honesty with your girl K Renee. On my YouTube, I am known as K the Bookworm, and in the author world, I am known as Sedona Rose. So today is part four of the series. It's the voice for me. Um, thank you guys to everyone who's listened to the one I previously did with uh Zakia Voice and Benjamin Charles. Uh, I did one with um, Winston James that will be out next week. And today, I'm super excited about this one. Uh, I found him, I believe around this time, I think around this time last year during quarantine. Uh, if you guys watched my Christina C. Jones interview, then you know who I am talking about. I have Mr. Emmanuel here with me today. So how are you doing? Um, first off, it's, uh, it's an honor to be on your show. Um, thank you for having me. I'm doing well. Um, I didn't know that um, that you were a, a fan, and I'm certainly, certainly really, really, really happy to, to be here with you today and um, just connect and, you know, talk. Thank you. Yes, I'm a huge fan. Actually. <laughs> I am a huge fan. I watch you and uh, Wesley's um, Turn On series every Thursday. Wow. wow. I watched the one Thank you. you guys did. You're welcome. I watched the one that you guys did Thursday. That one was very, very hot. <laughs> you very, like that very one. Hot. Um, yeah, so I watch, it all the, I watch you guys all the time. And like I said, I talked to Christina C. Jones. I interviewed you. I interviewed her uh, about a couple months ago. And we were talking about you. And she told me. And I just wanted to make sure this clarifies. She told me that you that was your first ever audiobook that you did with her. Was I think uh I want to say equivalent, equivalent equations, I think that's what it was. Uh equivalent exchange. Exchange, that's what it was, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yes, that is true. Um I had done uh like some some short stories, mm -hmm. uh like under my other name but I had never done a full book and I had never done a romance so it was the first um in more than one way when she told me that I was just like huh what I was <laughs> I was just like whoa because you're so known in the black especially in the black romance world you're so known everybody who anybody who's anybody who does romance wants you to you know to be their male character so speaking of that yes. That's how I feel sometimes. Because every time I talk to somebody and I ask somebody, like, who would you love? Oh, I would love Manny to be my male character lead and this and this and that. So it's, it's a mixture between you and Benjamin Charles. Wow. From what, wow. I, from awesome. from what I got from, my, like, from people. But my first question, my first two questions actually is, how did you get started and why did you get started? How did I get started and why did I get started? Okay. Um. So I think back in 2018, I was trying to figure out how to make money in auto book, an audio book. And I had taken a class and, you know, I was slowly trying to like figure it out. And fast forward to the pandemic, um, we were, I was in a situation where, where a, a lot of us as artists and actors, you know, we could no longer go to the studios to do these things. So um, stu uh, publishers and authors were looking for authors, I mean, excuse me, narrators who had home studio setups that could record from where they were at, you know, in the pandemic. And Wesley Siobhan, we're, we were, you know, we're good friends and I've seen her journey into the audiobook world and ad admired what she was doing. And so she around... I would say that time that the pandemic was starting, she had made a move. Well, actually, this is even pre-pandemic, actually. This was like up to it. Up to that point, she was going into the, into the city to record at different studios. And one day she said, hey, one of the male narrators dropped out from this book I'm about to do. Can I suggest you for it? So I was like, okay, cool. I'm like, absolutely. I'm looking to get as much experience as I can. So I went to the city, did equivalent exchange with uh, Wesley. Um, and that was the last thing that I did right before the pandemic started. And so once the pandemic started, 
Wesley has had a home studio set up that she was, you know, it was really clutch the way she was able to just get all the equipment and all that set up so she can keep her business going. And so watching that um, inspired me to do the same once I was able to get my money together and build something in my house. So once I was able to do that, that's when um, things really started to pick up and I was able to get take on more projects. So it started, you know, kind of just like me trying to figure out how to make some extra money. And, you know, Wesley Siobhan being the, you know, just the as incomparable as she is, she pulled me into it and the rest is history. Um, you know, if she doesn't reach out to me and say, hey, you want to, you know, do this book? You know, there is no, <laughs> you know, we're not here today. So I, I really give a lot of credit to Wesley because she was the the introduction and then to have an introduction with a writer like Christina C. Jones uh, to use one of her terms is kismet. It, everything went just beautifully, I think. That is dope. And the thing is, the thing I, I think the thing that has you and everybody else that I interviewed in common, Wesley Siobhan is the GOAT because everyone that I've interviewed has mentioned her name either once or twice. Wesley, you know, when I first met her, we were doing a play together and she was doing the play and she was recording at the same time. I didn't know how she was doing it. She would be memorizing the script and reading, you know, on breaks, reading the book that she was going to go record later. So I was like, man, she she's dope, man. Like, I, I wish I could, you know, at this time I was just kind of like, you know, drive and lift on the side. I really couldn't, I didn't have the audiobook stuff going. So a year later to see how far she had come, I mean, she, yeah. I mean, just the amount, the body of work has been prolific. You know, the amount of pages she's read, I don't know how she does it all, honestly. Um, so she's, she is the GOAT. <laughs> and, um, and I'm thankful that I'm thankful that I know the goat, you know what I'm saying? Because so, <laughs> the goat shared the wealth, you know. Thanks. And, uh, you know, for me, it was just like, okay, she put me on. I want to do the best job that I can do. And, you know, uh, yeah, like the rest is really, is really history. Things just, because I thought like Christina was going to be like, okay, this guy is cool for the fill-in. I didn't think she was going to ever call me back. Wow. So, you know, that's how I thought about it. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm stepping in for somebody and then, you know, she's going to get back to regu regularly scheduled programming. Yeah. So I didn't think of it as like, oh, they're going to want me again. You know, like, again, mm -hmm. I, I was just getting into this. I didn't know who I would work with at all. It was just like, oh, okay, this is a great thing to do. And then, okay, you know, that's it. So once things started, you know, got once the ball got rolling, I was like, oh, like, they, they, they like me. They want me, they want me to do another one. I was like, okay. Right, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't have no, I didn't have an audience or anyone to tell me, you know what I mean? It's not like yeah. when you do a, when you do a play, you can hear the applause when you, you know, do anything else. They're there in front of you with the audio book. The audience isn't in front of you, you know, so you don't know until it comes out and then you go on audible and look at the reviews, but that might take some time from the time you don't record it. So I didn't know anything. I was just like, okay, cool. I, I I never did this style of work before. I don't know if if they're gonna buy into me as this character or not. I had no idea. So once the feedback started rolling in, I was like, oh, okay, cool. All right, cool. I can and I and I I want to improve. I want to get better. How can I another project? I'll get better. That's dope. So my next question is: yep. with all the books that you've done. If you can go back and say the most challenging things that you've learned from the year from the year you started to now, what was it? What, like, what would it be? The most challenging thing, just in general. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Um, time management. Um, sometimes, like, I guess one thing. So things were different at first when I started getting into this because I didn't have like a busy schedule, mm -hmm. you know, we had all, I was just like waiting around for somebody to email me if they were going to email, you know, or just sending out emails, letting people know I was available. 
but I didn't really have a, a packed schedule. Once things started getting popping, time manage, time management became crucial because doing an audio book is not easy. Um, to be in a studio by yourself, no engineer with you, um, no director with you, having to, to run the session in terms, you know, for, for sound quality and for all of that, and also giving performance and staying hydrated so your voice sustains 200 pages, let's say, on average. Um, it's a feat. It's like a doing, it's like doing a one-man show by yourself. And it requires, you know, concentration. It requires precision in terms of the language. You know, you can't miss a word. You got to get the words exactly right, you know. So it requires a lot of you and it requires a lot of your brain. But at the same time, you're also performing. So you got to, you know, embody the story you're telling. You got to really bring it out. And so I think for me, doing it is one thing, but doing it comfortably and in a way that's not too stressful became the biggest challenge for me mm -hmm. once more projects started coming my way like how do I manage my time so that you know it's not coming down to the wire or I, I can manage this many pages per day um during this time of the day when it's most quiet in my neighborhood or this that the third because you know oftentimes like you could you could be ready to record and then all of a sudden you, you hear a lawnmower in the background or you know, a uh, truck pull up or, you know, all that, like the mics are so sensitive, they pick up yeah. everything. So, you know, and Wesley, the type, Wesley, Wesley can do this. I can't do this. Wesley can like pop up out her sleep at 2.30 in the morning and like start recording. I, I can't live, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I, earliest I might get up to record it, maybe nine, you know what I'm nine, ten. 10, you know, it, so it, it's, you know, it's it's a lot of things, but everything has made me, I guess, a better, just a better artist and a better person. And it's really like all the different stories, they, I feel like I relate to all the characters. So each story takes me on a journey too. I got to go on the journey too, you know, as the artist. So, you know, it's challenging, but ultimately it's, I think it's also very rewarding because the audience that we are reading for is so dope. And then I also think too, but piggybacking on what you're talking about with time management, I think time management is the most challenging thing for any and everybody. Because time management for me is ridiculous because I do this. <laughs> like I said, I do YouTube. I have a podcast. I write books. Plus on top of that, I have a full-time job. So, so yeah. there's days yeah. where I'm like, all right, I need to get this book written or I need to record an episode. And I'm like, all right, I'm taking a shower. I'm going to sleep. I don't get <laughs> I'm telling you, like, it's it's tough to manifest your dreams and stay sane. <laughs> very There's a lot agree. going on. <laughs> totally, totally agree. So you have worked with a lot of my favorites. And I just want to say thank you for that. Uh, you worked with Alexandria Warren. You worked, so you worked with Coach, you worked with CG, CCJ. Uh, the majority of the books that I've seen is like, I love the fact that CCJ uses you so much because from what, from my research, I've learned that you've done majority of her male leads, which is crazy well, to me. Not majority of them, but like from, from the books that I've read of her, there's an audio book that has you on it. Yeah, you know, I, she has been a great supporter of me and a great supporter of like, you know, just giving me opportunities to to sharpen my craft. And I, I'll also say this, like being able to do her stories and do her male leads, I feel like I become a better person from seeing her break down these relationships in a way that's relatable and um provides all these different perspectives and it's balanced and I, I feel like I've learned from reading like her work like just you know as a as a man and as somebody who you know you know we all want to be better in relationships we all want to be better partners and I think these stories illustrate so much relatable scenarios you know that I can relate to and I and watching the characters learn and develop I do as well so um, shout out to CCJ. Um, yeah. For sure. 
So speaking of books, if you could choose your top five books that you're that you've done that are your favorite, what would they be? Oh, that's tough. That's really tough because man. <laughs> So equivalent exchange has got to go up there because that was like what what started it all. That's your baby, so of course that has to go up there. Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna start there because yeah, I'm gonna start there. Okay. Um. Hmm. I did I did one recently called Scandalous. Um, that one was dope um, because it was like a really interesting character. Um, I did. Uh, what's one I really like? Oh, um, this is another CCJ. Uh, the one where I, where I did Kyle. His name it was, I think it was called The Lies. Mm, I've like heard that. the book, but I've heard good things about it. Yeah, I think I, I, I like that one too. That one I tried to come from a different place vocally. And I think the fans appreciated it. Um, because I try, I try to do different things. You know, I try to see what I can improve on and, you know, where I can expand. Um, let's see. Romance, romance. Uh, oh, Ben of Friends. Ben of Friends was like the first one that I did where I just worked with the author um, through ACX and kind of like produced it with the author okay, on my cool. own. That was my first time really like doing that. I always had somebody else do it for me or like, you know, because Wesley is like, She's like the captain of, of, of most of the projects. She yeah. handles a lot of it, you know? Um, so this was like kind of like when I kind of just got on my own through uh, one of these websites where narrators can find authors and vice versa. So Ben and Friends is up there because for sentimental reasons, but also because I thought it was a, it was a dope story. Um, oh, um. I did a, I did some some short stories, <laughs> some really hot short stories with uh, Alexandria House, um, and so I think it was called the the, the love the, the deluxe mixtape or I'm sorry I'm blanking on the names. No, uh, one was a holiday one was a holiday special, one was like a holiday one, and the other one was like the love deluxe mixtape or something like that. So um, those were cool too, but. I, I really like all of the of the authors and all of the stories because they're just it's just cool to get different perspectives and like play different characters and um just go on a journey with people. That's dope. I got you jumped on that question. Ha ha, I did good. I did good with that question. <laughs> <laughs> you did, you did. That was a, a I tough one. You got you stumped. So I asked some questions for my audience and they want to know because you and Wesley do these. If you guys don't like watch them, definitely go with their on Wesley's uh, Instagram page. They are nice and hot. Ooh, we yes, yes, yes. Especially the one I did Thursday. Oh my God. I had to get off of it because I was like, whoa. <laughs> I, had to, I had to get off, hop back on and then get off again because I was just like, Y'all did that scene. This, this <laughs> y'all did that scene, and then y'all did Crave so good. Thank you. Thank you like, asked Angelo. Crave was dope. Oh, my gosh. Angelo, I have a love-hate relationship with him because he was so cocky. But yet, at the oh, same yeah, time, he was... he was so cocky, but at the same time, he was such a lovable person. That's how it goes, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but you did him right? so you did him so well. So you. because Thank you do you. those scenes and because you do a lot of romance, and because of the authors that you do a lot of romance from, I know you have a lot of sexual material. So uh audience wanted to know, you know, it, it plead the fifth or whatever, just want to just you know, just answer the question. Do you use the stuff that you read on your partners? Ah. Uh, yeah, some, some, I've been doing a lot. Um, I'm sure, like, I'm not, I don't think I'm thinking about it. Like, 
when I, I'm going to do this exact scene later or like I'm going to do this. I'm, I'm, I'm very much like, I like to, to like live in the moment mm-hmm. and I like to, and I, and everybody is, you know, people are different. Chemistry is different between people. Am I inspired? Yes, I am. My, those scenes turn me on. Like being in the studio by myself recording, I'm turned up when I come out. Like, you know, like I'm like, mm-hmm. this stuff on my mind to do. So um, sometimes I might have something, like sometimes I might not, you know? So yeah. it's not like I, it's not like I say to myself, okay, I'm going to do this thing, but am I inspired? Am I turned on? Like, do I feel like, Ooh, man, like, damn, I'm going to try this. Yes. I do think like that. I, but if I, if I was to think in my head, like, yeah, I, I executed this. I can't recall. Like, I'll, I'll be in another, I'll be in another headspace at that point. You know, <laughs> I, I, I get it. I get it. Totally get it. You know what I mean? Like, I, I can't say for sure. I mean, I feel like I'm inspired, but I can't say like I, I've done this exactly like this scene did it. Like, I, yeah. No, I'll take it. I'll take inspired. I'll take inspired. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely inspired. You can't, you, you cannot read those that many scenes and that many uh, sex scene, like, and not be inspired. And I have a sink in. That's it's, very it's, true. Trust me, it's it's there. I just can't give you specifics, but yeah, like, no, absolutely. I, I, get I get it. As a reader, I get in those moods. So I can only imagine you actually reading them out loud, and you having to voice the characters. I can under. I I get it. I, totally I will. I will say this. This is something I could say. This taught me, like doing these books and doing romance specifically, it taught me the power of like, of like the voice, even during intercourse and during foreplay and like being vocal and saying and speaking and saying what you, you know, talking your talk. You know what I mean? Like I have definitely upped that. That's for sure. Like that this has inspired me like okay nah like I could be more vocal in these ways and and you know the response is is appreciated you know I get it because I love a vocal man or woman so I duly understand (laughs) (laughs) I love I love especially when you're in that zone and the vibe is there like because I'm a vocal person while I'm in the bedroom as well so if you can't be vocal with me then we it's not gonna work. I go away. So let me stream. Uh, hmm. Oh, that okay. Here's one. Here's a good one, actually. Out of all of the especially since we're on that scene, since we're talking about scenes, uh, what scenes do you enjoy like reading the most? Do you enjoy the sex scenes or do you enjoy like the build up of of the character of your character uh, getting to know the other character or the climax parts? So I think so the other day, you know how on this on the show the other day we were talking about uh erotic blueprints. Mm-hmm. Um I don't know if you related to that. Like were you able to find which one of the ones we mentioned that you were or no. <laughs> okay unfortunately I, it's it's all good I'm, I'm i'm just saying that because i realized the other day that i'm one of those people that likes anticipation you know i like to be enticed and teased and i like to for to anticipate something that i have to wait on yeah you know and, and salivate over it you know what i mean uh-huh. before so i i like the scenes that kind of kick off the initial tension between two characters. I'm always fascinated by that. Like, how do people go and go about, um, I don't know, like, like mining the chemistry that they have. That's that, that always, fat, how people go from having a guard up to letting their guard, to letting their guard down. Like, I really like those scenes and I like when those scenes are written well and like well-crafted and, you know, cause, People can, you know, you might think you got, you know, a potential and then they say something or do something that's like, ah, nah, you know, like, ah, this person, nah. But when it comes through and when it happens, it's a beautiful thing. So I love the the tension build up scenes, Mm -hmm. but 
you know how it is in 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 in, in audio book. The real shit is when we get to the scene where they fuck. You know, basically. <laughs> like, basically. The real you want to have a good sex scene. Like you want to have that. You you know the the foreplay is cool, but it's got to be popping when we narrate the the actual doing the do. So I love I love all that. Like I love like I. <laughs> I'm going back and like redoing parts if I don't like it. And like that, those take the most time for me, I would say. Like, cause I, I can't, I know those is where, those are the scenes that are going to have the replay value. Yeah. You know, so I always try to take extra time on those. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoy, I enjoy the journey, you know. Um, I even, I even enjoy the aftermath. Cause you know, it's different after it's over. You know what I mean? Like the thing, it's a whole different relationship afterwards. So I enjoy, I enjoy the whole journey of it because I can relate to all of it. Mm. Have you used some of the life lessons or just the lessons that you read in the books to like your normal day life? I try to like, you know, life is crazy. You know, I mean, it's, it's it's like we're always evolving we're always growing um i think the main thing that i'm trying to work on right now is um and i think christina jones christina c jones she she writes male characters that are that are very articulate and like they're they're in touch with their emotions you know they 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 can articulate it well like i've read her stuff i'm like damn man i was going through the same thing i wish i could have said this but I could I didn't I couldn't put it this well. You know, I feel this way, but for whatever reason at that time, I couldn't express this with such clarity. And it would have made a big difference had I done that, you know, or been able to say, hey, this is working for me. This isn't working for me. How could we address it? Or whatever the case is. So for me, I think I'm just trying to like uh work on staying open, staying vulnerable. So that like I'm more flexible in these moments where it could be a conflict, but because I'm vulnerable, because I'm saying what's on my heart and I'm not just going along to get along, like we could really, you know, have some real intimacy as opposed to being who we think the other person wants to be with. So. I think communication is definitely like very, very important, not even just in dating, but just in general. In general. Because the assumptions of people that you might think it might look at one way and then the next day it might be totally different. And just like I said, being a reader, like before I even like found audio, just having in my own mind, just like, all right, so I think this is how they will say it. And then as when you actually listen to the audio, just like, oh, that's exactly how I thought, that's exactly how I thought he would say it. Oh, like, no, the, I, me personally reading, I love when the sex is done. Mm. Like what happens next because sometimes mm. it, depending on how these authors do it it could go you know sunshine and rainbows or it could go rain and thunderstorms mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the one thing i love about you guys is that the way if it goes thunderstorms and rainstorms the guy the way you guys build up that tension is like you really like embody the characters that you're reading so I, it's like a movie to me, like a silent movie. Like, uh, see it, even though, I, even though I can't see it, I can hear it. I can hear how upset this, this character actually got in the book, stuff like that. So yeah. that's, how, that's just me. I know some other people, like, you know, like I said, like, like you said before, a lot of people like it for the sex scene, stuff like that. Me personally, I like conflict. Maybe that's just the mm -hmm. little, little toxicity of me inside of me. But I like yeah. conflict. I like conflict because, like I said, I just love how you guys embody the characters. And I feel as if as an audio narrator, you have to embody the characters. You have to really read. Probably, I don't know if you take notes or not, you probably have to take notes and just think about, all right, if I was this character, how would I sound when doing this? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, um, yeah, like, it, it's, it's always a challenge, every character. Um, I'm actually... Since you since you're talking, um, I wanted to ask you the same question you asked me. What characters or projects 
books have have you really enjoyed? I'm curious. I, I don't always get a chance to Ooh. have these kind of conversations. So I'm I'm interested because I remember, you know, I remember what it took to do some of these books. So it's like, I want to know from you, which ones you liked and why. Oh, he. So if I had to choose from you, I think my favorite one would have to be Held in Contempt by Ava Cherie. That's oh damn! I forgot about that. Yeah, see, <laughs> that's a top one too. Like I just couldn't... <laughs> uh, because I wasn't. I read. I read the book, and then when I actually and then I listened to the audio, the scene that got me was the plot twist. I wasn't expecting. Uh, and spoiler alert: if you haven't if you haven't read the book or listened to it, oh well. I wasn't expecting the judge to be her husband, or oh, I knew they were together. But I wasn't expecting them to be married until until like everything blew up. Oh, that was a dope plot twist. That was a so the way dope that plot you, twist. I, like me reading it, I was like, oh, this is good. This yeah. is good. It's gonna be dope. It's gonna be dope. Yeah. So the way that you like just like the, I don't. Uh, it's something about your voice, and I don't know if you heard this before, but when you like get up to that high octave of you and you're like pissed off to the highest festivity you sound good as hell uh what what was this part what, what i think what when he was like this? really upset and he was just saying like how like i'm your husband like i'm your, like you're married or whatever and i think she just yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like the issue of it that part yeah. right there i was just like whoa so that one was good for me um Behind the Scenes was just such a lovable book. Behind the Scenes mm -hmm. reminded Behind the Scenes reminded me of a love, like basically like a TV, like a like a Lifetime movie. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. That was Pierre, wasn't it? Yep. Pierre and, and yeah, yeah, I remember that one. Yep. Pierre yeah. and Logan, that was a good one. And Logan, that's right, that's right. Yeah. And um. If I had to choose, I mean, majority of them are CCJ books, but if I had to choose my other one, I think it would probably be The Rose That Got Away. Oh, yes. Yes, The Rose That Got Away. Yo, I would love to see that movie. Listen, like, I told her that too when I interviewed her. I was like, I would love to see a Rose and Thorns movie. Yo, I, man, like I'm a, I, all right. I'm a presser about it. Since you pressed her about it, I'll press her about it too. Yes. Cause we, 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 we got to get that movie. When I'm, when I was doing this book, like I was, I was pausing so many times recording. It took me forever to record it. Cause I was just like, Oh, should this be a dope scene? And like, Oh man, like this is a film right here. Yes. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad we talked because I'm a, I'm a presser on that too. Like we, we got to get a, a screenplay for uh, yes, the roles that got away. You do, we do. Oh, speaking of screenplays, and I'm glad you brought that up. Um, do you think, and this is just a person that's, re, you know, you're working with a lot of Black indie authors. Do you think that majority, like not even majority, do you think that platforms like Netflix and Hulu and Amazon Prime would like a lot, like should have like, you know how they do like their own like kind of like movies stuff like that should they have like a own section of movies to where it's nothing but black romance authors instead of these white people <laughs> you know I, I i'll say this i'll say this like i i want the stories that i'm reading i want to see i want to see these these turned into into films i really do like they're, they're Black authors. You have narrators that are Black reading them, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they fe the stories feature whole Black communities and whole um, all these different towns and cities and, and storylines. Like, that's so much work that people can have, right? That's so much, that's so much um, story that, that we could tell. Like, I think so. Like, I would love to see these stories on a Netflix I would love to see these stories produced. Like, I want to get it to a point financially where it's like, I just want to be able to buy up scripts and turn them into movies and, and turn them into films. You know, like that's what I want to be able to do eventually. You know, down the line, yeah, um, is is be able to say, hey, like I want to option this as a as a screenplay and do what do what I need to do to turn it into that and like produce this stuff. Like, 
these are great characters, all time great, like for like multiple stories. You know what I mean? Like these are TV series. Um, so when I read these, trust me, like I'm, I'm, I see it. You know, if you see a movie, trust me, I'm seeing a movie too. I'm a visual person. So I'm old, you know, looking at where we're at now, I could definitely see, you know, maybe sooner than later. Like I know Wesley is starting, um, her uh, production company. Yeah, shout out to that her. That might be, it. yeah. So, so you know, Wesley, Wesley probably already doing it to be to keep it real. She probably already probably. got something in the works. She probably already. So you you know you speaking it, but she might already have that ball rolling. And you know, I, I shout out to her for that um, yeah. because these stories do need to be told, and they do need they're impactful. They're great stories too. Like you don't even see these kind of stories on TV like that. And that's what you I'm know? saying. Because and, always, and yeah, they, it's always the same story. No, majority of the time, the same actors. And you have so many new upcoming black actors, so even writers who are dope. And it's like Netflix are like bypass. Not don't get me wrong. Like some of the books that they have, you know, redone in movies and TV shows, I've seen, I've read them before, cool, like, you know, it's cool, whatever, but I'm like, you got a plethora of African-American writers right here who have a, who has the fan base, so you're not, it's not like you're not going to get the streams, or you're going to get the streams, but, like, you're just bypassing them to get to the New York Times bestsellers and stuff like that, like, just give those a chance, because nine times out of ten, the ones that aren't on the New York Times bestsellers be better than the ones that are on the New York Times bestseller. Yeah, no, you 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 hitting it right on the head. It's um, and I appreciate you you know putting it like that because you know like I just feel like the one thing I really appreciate appreciate about this community is you guys value not just the narrators, you 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 value the authors, you value the characters themselves. Like it's just it's just a, it's such a supportive, loyal. And also like outspoken community. So it's just like, you know, we're turned on turned on isn't turned on without, you know, the people who tune in. Yeah. You know, like they're they're the other hosts. You know, y'all be wilding in the chat. You know, it's just like so much great material and moments that we have that kind of keep the energy um going. So yeah, like I I, I think as time goes on, we're I think that's the next wave. You know, I think that's the next the next thing to really like this genre is the next thing to kind of like really pop off I think in terms of uh black film and um black romance so I'm looking forward to it because I'm I miss a certain era of black movies and love stories I, there's a certain era that we don't have anymore so um, we don't have we don't have that kind of like love story black romance story genre like we used to mm-hmm. you know right. um there were yeah, I, I miss it. I I miss it. So this is the place. If it's going to come from anywhere, it's going to come from here. I totally, totally agree. Because like that 90s, like I said, everybody wants that 90, 2000 love. And when you're reading these books, you get that, you know? Exactly. You exactly. Get, you, get, you get that feel. And when I read some of these books, I just like, I'm in my feelings, wishing I had a man when I don't have one. Even when I'm writing, like I want, and I, and I tell people this all the time. I uh, like when I'm writing my characters, I want my characters to have the love that I'm lo- like not even like searching for. I should say not looking, searching for. So mm-hmm. if I can't get love properly. I want my characters to be loved properly. <laughs> That's what I say. <laughs> um, I, I feel the same way. I, I feel a sense of like, you know, like when the. I always feel good when the guy does whatever he needs to do or grows up in the way he needs to grow up or supports yeah. her the way that he needs to. I always feel like a sense of like, okay, it, resolution within myself because there's been times where, you know, I, I can't say that it ended as well in my own life, you know, like, mm-hmm. ah, this is what I should have thought to do or like, oh, this will be a better way to handle that moment next time I'm in this type of situation. Um, so yeah, man, we just living and learning. <laughs> but I think that's just human nature with us is that mm-hmm. we live and learning and as you know as the pandemic hit I think a lot of people too really sat down with themselves and really was like all right what can I do to not even approve 
just in a relationship wise, but just what can I do to improve me? Talk about it. You know, and reading during the pandemic is just like, I was just like, okay, I'm like her, but I'm also like him, but I'm also like her. You know what I'm saying? So reading those books, I said, I'm a reader before I'm anything. And like people don't call me the bookworm for nothing. I could read a 400 page book in like three hours and understand it from the bottom, like from the beginning to the end. That's a gift. Wow. <laughs> Like, people don't, people don't call me the bookworm for nothing. I just said, I read one book of uh, my favorite, by my favorite two authors, Ashley Internet and uh, Davis Coleman. They had a new book that came out back like a year or two, two years ago. I got the book. Yeah. I started it at like 3 30 ish, ended it about like seven. And it was like a 300 page book. How you do that? I honestly, I just sit. I sit in my room, I may have some music going on, sometimes I don't, and I just read. If it's a book that I really, really love or that got my interest, I could just read it all day. Wow, Finish. that's a level of, of concentration that yeah. I envy. Finish it, <laughs> write a review about it, and then if somebody asks me what happened book, I could give them a whole detail of the book. You gifted. That's all I can say. I can't even impact. <laughs> 300 pages that's gonna take me at least a week or two no. <laughs> and we'll be concentrating it, the whole time <laughs> yeah i do i really do and i get upset like just like every other else i could get upset and get mad and cry like a baby if something happens in the book and i think even with my writing i think um it it showed out more in my writing because if somebody asks me oh what are you working on now i just go into a whole tangent of what i'm working on now what I got in my head for my next book and my other books, and they just look at me like, I actually what you're working on now, like today, not next week mm. or the week after. So I'm very passionate when it comes about my books and uh, Black Indie Love, because like I said, it doesn't get recognized. It's well, recognized, I, I it's admire recognized that. but it's not recognized as it should be. Yeah, no, I hear what you're saying. Well, you know, we are, we are slowly getting it out there, and... Uh, there's, there's more to come. Yeah, that is so, so true. So before we get out of here, um, are there any new things that you are working on that you can tell us about? Man, I've been trying to. So there's a, the Book of Niles um, by uh, Alexandria House. That's going to be coming out hopefully this year. Okay. Um, I've been trying to produce that in a very different, unique way um, than I think you would expect for audiobook. Um, and so I'm not gonna say too much detail, but it's just, it's, it's gonna be a really uh, creative, um, sensual, um, a la Love Jones kind of feel. Oh, I love Love Jones. Love Jones is in my top five movies. <laughs> Of all time. So, so we're trying to, we, we, you know, that's that's definitely what we're, we're we're trying to recapture with this project. It's just been difficult trying to get all of these different artists in one room at one time with the equipment and direction. It's been a little bit of a of of a, of a process for me as like a first time producer in a way, trying to manage it all. Um, but with that said, look out for the book of Niles. Um, it's on the way. And when it arrives, it will certainly be dope. <laughs> okay. In okay. anything else, or is that all? Uh, I think I think I'm gonna be doing a duet style book with Leslie pretty soon. Another with CCJ. Oh. Speaking of CCJ, so it might even be next week. Actually, honestly, I I gotta look at the schedule again. But uh, yeah, that's coming up. It's coming up super fast too. Like I can't. Can you believe it's already about to be? Um, like we already about to be at Thanksgiving. I know. Like, I know. This year flown by. This year done flown by. And I'm oh. like, damn, we are. It's already about to be 2022. Ooh, it flew God. by. But when you're work, I work in because I work in the schools. I work in the school system right now. I'm a li I, I'm a library assistant. It is a drag. Mm. Like it is so. I like. I was burnt out the first month of school and I know I shouldn't have been burned out then. 
I believe you. I believe you. Um, it's a lot. Like I shout out to all the people who work in the school system. My mother worked in the school system. So, you know, like I don't know how schools have been doing it. Whew. I don't know how. I don't know how. It's a it's a it's a drag, especially when you're working with little kids. I work in elementary school too. Mm-hmm. No, <laughs> it's a handful. It's a handful. I've 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 taught too. So I, I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> it, 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 uh, may, may the force be with you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. But we're almost there. Chris said we got Thanksgiving break in like three weeks. Well, actually in two weeks. Then we in then we back in school for another two weeks, and then we got Christmas break. And then we got a couple of days off, and then my birthday's in April. Turning that 3-0. Hey, 3 <laughs> I'm nervous yet excited because I don't look so I don't look like I'm about to turn 30. So <laughs> <laughs> that's a good thing. Uh, but yes, so uh guys, I will leave all his information in the description below. Emmanuel, thank you once again for joining me. I truly, truly appreciate it. No problem. No problem. It was a pleasure. And um, it was great talking with you. Yes, yes, yes. Guys, uh, there is no voice for me next weekend because the Y'all Fest is coming next weekend. And you guys know how I feel about that. I get to meet my idol, Nick, jo Nick Stone, once again. I'm super excited about that. But on the 20th of this month, two weeks from today, I go live on my IG at krene underscore with the one, the only, the icon, the GOAT, Wesley Shervon. Oh. I am wrapping up my It's the Voice for Me series with Miss Wesley Shervon. And I am going to be so ecstatic. I'm going to have my wine in my coffee mug for that one because I know that one is going All to right. be wild. So <laughs> if you guys have any, 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 any questions, please DM me at uh, at K Renee underscore or leave them in the comments below or if you follow me on Facebook uh my Facebook name is Sedona Rose answer questions on there because I'm taking all the questions uh that one's gonna be a good one like I said this is gonna be my first time ever doing a live I've done live interviews but it's my first time actually doing hosting a live interview with her uh I'm nervous because my first time ever really talking to her too so if you have any questions please 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 leave them in the comments below guys uh what else any other news for me any news oh yeah so book four is currently getting edited right now i'm working on book five six and seven at one time hopefully i'll have them done by the end of next month uh book five is due in like three weeks so i need to actually work on that now i'm about to actually do that after we get up here and you guys just keep supporting me um my book the one is out currently right now on amazon kindle paperback all that jazz uh, follow me on uh, all my social medias, which is on here. My book review is K Renee, uh, K the bookworm underscore underscore. Uh, my personal page is at K Renee, K A Y R E E N E A underscore. My author page is Sedona Rose Writes. And yeah, so I love you guys. And until next time, read what you love, write what you want to read, have faith, have confidence, love you, and always be you. Bye. <laughs> Yeah.